So welcome back to Half Past Capitalism, where we talk about alternatives to capitalism as if they were possible. This show is part of the Harbinger Media Network. Our guest today is Matt Chrisman, the co-founder and co-host of Chapo Trap House, uh, and the creator of many dozens of hours of the Kush vlog, and most recently, a long-form examination of the 30 Years' War called Hell on Earth. Welcome, Matt. Hi, thank you. Um, so I was interested to talk to you because you seem to be working towards some fairly original attempts to understand the sort of current political challenges. Um, but drawing from a sort of, I guess, unique uh, set of combination of, uh, of things, of historical analysis, uh, political observation, but also, I guess, what we could call direct spiritual experience, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, and I want to get into all those, but I guess the, the concept of the self seems like a good place to start. Um, so you said at one point that the concept of the eternal self will damn this particular iteration of humanity to annihilation. I'm not sure if I got that quote correctly. Um, but, but if that's along the lines of, uh, of what, what you said, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, good question. <laughs> uh, I guess I just mean the uh, reification of the self as like an eternal, uh, unity, like a, a, a thing that it cannot be, uh, the thing that must be like defended on its own merits and protected from like the very idea of change or, or, or evolution, uh, that what we are, that, that our received conception of self that we have, uh, that has essentially been assembled for us by our cultural milieu is, uh, a, a something that, that transcends space and time and that must be, uh, defended against any, uh, challenge to it. Uh, and because I do think that that is dangerous because we're going to be trapped. We are trapped now, uh, in these prisons of self that's in a, in the context of crisis that we find ourselves means that we can only see each other as, uh, threats, as, uh, dangers to that inviolable self rather than potential collaborators in the building of new types of subjectivity that could transcend the crisis that we find ourselves in. I mean, you've had some really interesting observations about how that self sort of forms in the sort of historical material conditions that we, we all find ourselves here in, in the, you know, 2023. Um, yeah. Can you, can you just talk a little bit about how you see that, that forming and, and, and I guess also what you see as the alternative to such a self? I mean, the alternative is, is a, a collaborative uh expansive self that encompasses the well-being of others like not just the immediate family members in a hierarchy that reinforces the self but something that breaks down uh our uh illusionary uh reification and i mean i i don't know how that's going to come about i just know that the fundamental uh, unsustainability of our current self-conception will inevitably uh, result in people uh, trying to find new ways to live as the old ways become more and more intolerable. And, and so you talk about the sort of illusory nature of it. I mean, what what is the reality that's being hidden by that illusion? Th that uh, essentially that you can take it with you, that what you're... Uh, what you are acquiring, what you fixate on as, as uh, uh, status symbols or validation have a transcendent character that has to be protected. And that as a result, all of life is a zero sum contest for them. Yeah, I, I, I guess I want to delve into this just a little more because it seems like, I mean, we all have a self, like we have a self-conception. I guess, I guess the question is how how permanent we see it or like how seriously we take it or how much we invest in it um, versus um, yeah. Versus how much we see, see ourselves as sort of more part of a, a bigger unity. Is that, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Well, just something where our idea of self interest changes because the real prison of self is, is the idea that our self interest is something that cannot be shifted or interrogated that it is 
that what I want is what I need. Right. Uh, as you know, what I want is not a stable category and can change, and it can make the labors of life, the effort of ex expended through life, uh, have different subjective meaning. Uh, and it can take things that appear impossible because they would require sacrifice of that self-interest and become a pursuit of a differently conceived self-interest. Yeah. I mean, when we talk about organizers or when, you know, when we, when, when, when train, train organizers, I guess, uh, and when we, you know, when organizers talk about what's effective, often it's a, sort of a cultivation of a sense of self-interest, um, among, you know, workers in a workplace or a community or whatever, like is, um, is that different from the kind of self you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, it has the potential to be. Okay. And and what does that transition look like? Like, is, is oh, it, I have is no it, idea. Is... Don't tell me how it looks. I don't. <laughs> it's happening because my thing I really do believe is that it's happening right now. But it's an it's the sparks that are emerging between people in individual encounters and then are being built upon. Uh, but it it is essentially invisible to the, the Sauron eye uh, of media because those sort of uh, relationships and that, that sort of agenda is is rendered invisible because all that we can pick up is our is the psychopathic drive uh that's the only thing that gets narrativized uh culturally and, and what is the what is the sort of i don't know affordance or limitation that that leads the media to to be that way well part of it is that it it's the the uh, impulse behind seeking media is an impulse to, uh, at least partially, to escape, to escape from the conditions of one's life, which is, and it's only in those conditions of life that these sort of possibilities emerge. So you're already sort of out of that zone. And because uh, media has to be legible to a relatively broad audience outside of any fixed temporal spatial area, uh, then you have to discuss and debate events at a certain level of abstraction. And that abstraction uh, pulls us away from the real clinch of life and replaces that experience with uh, a, a essentially a collection of people to be judged either as good or bad and then compared to ourselves uh, so that we can reaffirm our goodness relative to somebody else. And, and is this where the is that the sort of insight that the that the exhortation to take the grill pill uh, sort of comes from? And, and I guess you know, for people not familiar, could you just you know briefly explain what that is? Well, it was just my way of dealing with the collapse of the Bernie campaign, where I saw as soon as it was over, people getting back to the exact arguments that they had had, uh, and the exact sort of fake uh, uh, fake action that had uh, taken them in. 2016 and just to see this instantaneous reversion was very depressing and uh, and it was something that i personally felt i couldn't continue with without you know breaking down one way or the other and so for my own mental well-being i needed to pull back from investing the sort of emotional energy i had traditionally into po presidential politics certainly uh, and that meant sort of self-consciously trying to uh, pull myself away from uh, what had previously I, uh, a dynamic that I previously had thought, you know, ha was freighted with meaning, but now had that meaning had deserted it. And instead of trying to re up it and just keep banging on the on the uh, uh, the little Skinner bar to get more uh, enjoyment, I needed to find uh, another uh, place to find that. And did you? I mean, I I I wean myself off of presidential politics relative i mean there's only a degree i can only do it to some degree because you know i now have this job that this involves paying attention and talk caring about politics and talking about it but uh i certainly feel like i've changed the emphasis of my commentary on it and the vlogs are a big part of sort of shaping and another way to talk about this stuff that was not uh the invested horse race yeah, I mean, and, and in the in the vlogs, it's really interesting because I mean, you you're really sort of going through it, uh, especially in the sort of early early days of the vlogs. You're you're you know you're 
you're clearly like grappling with the sort of come down from the and and the sort of reorientation toward reality that that the end of the Bernie cam- campaign sort of entailed for you. Um, but you also like describe in quite a bit of depth some of the sort of I guess you know I guess again for lack of a better word, but sort of spiritual experiences of like. Um, and, and I want to bring this back to self because it seems like you, there was sort of a transformation of your, your understanding of what the self is or who you are, um, that you sort of talked about this. So can, can you just talk a little bit about what, what that experience was like? I, uh, I it was just a, 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 I guess an opening of a door. I, I had felt pretty much my entire adult life that I was. Uh, like you know, imprisoned in a little glass box, and I think that that's a common experience. Uh, but I just I was feeling breeze like from an opening, and I was just sort of trying to look around to identify where the crack is there that was allowing that breeze to enter my my box, and then the process of of trying to uh, open it. Uh, a little more. I mean, I've certainly never got to the point where I felt like I had totally transformed anything. Uh, I fear, I guess, what that would really look like. Uh, so, uh, and since I'm a fear-based being, I haven't, you know, pushed too far. But with the window rolled down, it's a lot easier to breathe. For for sure. Uh, and and what is what's the quality of that that breeze, as you put it? Like what 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 uh what is it? I mean, it's just mainly. It's a lot of it is just the lowering of the stakes of of yeah. my own existence. Like the thing that paralyzed me for most of my adult life is just this this constant fear of death that uh, was manifested by hypochondria, uh, and that was because I could not conceive of death because I lived in, you know in a culture where death is exiled. Largely just a a lessening of the the sense of stakes of death, a a, a, la, a lightening of the load of of existence moment to moment because of the ability that I have cultivated to, to integrate uh, death into my understanding of life rather than to attempt to displace it, because it's in that displacement that it becomes this unfathomable uh, shadow. Uh, and, and by kind of confronting it and accepting it to an extent, I've been able to meet people more uh, from a position of generosity than, than a defensive crouch. And is that something that you've you've sort of, I mean, in conversations with others, is that sort of a common experience that you that, that you see happening, I guess, out there or with people that you're discussing this with? I I don't know. I don't, I don't know if, if other people are having that experience. I mean, it seems like in your discussion of sort of, I don't know, um, the left and sort of how spirituality fits in, uh, it, it seems like, like, um, like moving, and, I mean, just what you said earlier, I guess, like, it seems like moving that horizon of, of self-interest and uh, does entail that's some kind of, I don't know broadening of generosity so is there any extrapolation that you would make there in what sense um i guess i guess from your experience to uh i don't know a theory of change for for lack of a better no i mean i i live i i I struggle with the fact that my life doesn't i'm very isolated from the, the the bustle of all this stuff i mean i don't have a real job you know and that's where the real energy is uh I'm probably going to change at some point, but for now, I, I kind of don't really feel like I am part of anything. Uh, and I just have to, you know, accept that that's the current case and, and have faith and move forward. But I mean, I, I, I mean, I can see how you would say that from one perspective, but it, it also seems like you have a lot to say about sort of you know, just from observing from the outside, you know, it's, it's, it's a different perspective than like, I don't know, a union organizer in a, in a, you know, Amazon warehouse or something, but it, but it's still a perspective that, that, that can bring some insight, you know? Yeah. I, 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 I'm trying though to mostly focus on historical uh, commentary more and more because, you know, you can kind of periodize something in the past and then you can chart like internal dynamics 
uh, as opposed to trying to make sense of a day-to-day flow that uh, I just don't find myself really confident to have any insights in. Yeah, I mean that, that that's fair enough, but it seems it seems like on the one hand, sure, on the other hand, uh, you know, I don't see many other people talking about like bringing together that sort of direct experience of what it's like to sort of uh roll the window down as you put it and and come come at like relate to people around you or humanity with with from from perspective of generosity and I guess ultimately solidarity um and and the sort of media environment. I mean, I feel like you bring all those things together in a, in an interesting, interesting way. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take you at your word that you're, that you're wanting to back away from that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I just feel, it feels incredibly presumptuous on my part. I mean, that's fair, but I feel like that's also what, that what makes it interesting is that you're, I mean, that's, that's what I think makes the Kush vlog compelling is that, is that you sort of go out on that, on that limb. Yeah. Um, so I was, I mean, I was actually going to say like, you know, people, people joke because, you know, you, you do have this like pretty significant following of, uh, at least a certain, certain, you know, demographic slice, but, uh, uh, following nonetheless, you know, people joke about you starting, uh, starting the cult, uh, as it were, huh. um, you know, when you get going on your sort of spiritual discussions, but, but I guess just to take that idea seriously and, and, and to take it obviously not, not to put you at the center of it, but but to say like you know i guess what do you see as the risks and potential rewards of of collective spiritual work uh, as part of a political project um and, and and i guess yeah how how do you sort of conceive of that i i mean i i just i i i don't think that i have it in me to do any kind of leadership of anyone uh i i i i I'm too aware of my own uh, weaknesses. I think I, I, I don't have the. Uh, maybe that'll change, but for now, I I, I don't really have that uh, that cosmic sense of of like placid certainty. Uh, I'm a little. I'm, I'm I'm too I'm too aware of my own failures in life, and, and uh, to have the confidence to feel like I can you know be doing anything other than just uh, you know preaching broadly uh, any like a, a uh, taking other people's lives into my responsibility you know uh, like that I feel like that's a recipe for a disaster but what you know but I don't judge any other anything anybody else is doing what they feel like they have to do because you know there's gonna have to be radical experiments in human living and survival uh, to make sense of this era that we live in and you know what that's going to look like again i don't really know yeah i mean i seem to have have caught you at sort of a (laughs) an ebb as it were but but i feel like the tenor of a lot of the the kinds of things you talk about are like that you know that the the left the left or whatever we're going to, whatever succeeds to the left is going to have to have some kind of spiritual component. So do, do you have any sort of, uh, I don't know, tentative observations about what, what that might look like? I mean, I, from where I sit in my isolated position, I just don't see anything right now. I mean, there's the labor movement and it's the resurgent labor militancy, which is very heartening, but you know, I don't see any, uh, new myths or new rituals, new, uh, transcendent ideas emerging i i don't see any any like vocabulary of faith that uh transcends what we uh this kind of sterile uh, uh categories that we've been we've inherited uh so i i don't know yeah i mean i was going to ask about like i mean so you talk about the sort of self as this sort of i don't know I don't know, a glass box or, or sort of a cage as it were, uh, and, and sort of breaking out of that as a way to, as, as the sort of horizon of, of the possibility of her solidarity or gen- even generosity or, a, or a, a different sense of self-interest that could, you know, make things possible that aren't possible right now, um, with, with this sort of, uh, with everyone existing in this box and, and seeing each other as potential enemies, at least, um, but yeah, you just mentioned, uh, what was it? Ritual vocabulary of faith, uh, you know, mythology. Um, I'm, I'm curious, do you, is that what you see as the sort of tools for how to collectively, how we might even potentially collectively sort of get out of the box? 
not initially. I think that they're the byproducts of processes. They're, they're a way to make sense of new relationships that emerge out of the contingency of survival and, and struggle. Uh, and then, you know, once they are articulated, they then become uh, something to orient towards and to bring people together around. At least, you know, that's, I think, how they generally work. That's how those sort of things emerge historically. And I think that that will still be true in the future. And and what do you uh, think? I, I mean, so so it sounds like there's there's sort of experiences of whether it's sort of personal awakening or experiences of like collective solidarity in a group or or something that sort of busts busts us out that 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 we then describe, which then can be gain a sort of a toehold in the discourse. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um. And and what do you think is preventing us from having those experiences right now? I mean, obviously the you know the crises are upon us. So so what do you think is holding us back? Uh, I mean, isolation, you know, just the general belief that we're in this on ourselves, we're, we're in this alone, and that uh, everyone is our, our competitor. Uh, and the because we can only, uh, like, see each other through the lenses that have been crafted by the uh, media apparatus that kind of tells us what reality is, uh, then we're just left to uh, evaluate everybody meet and then and subconsciously and consciously uh, slot them into different uh, demographic tranches that we uh, like either that's either a friend or an enemy but then even the friends are also competitors in the hierarchy within our side yeah that, that makes sense um, I want to shift gears I guess to to maybe what you're more excited to t to talk about today, which is um you know you did this series with Chris Wade Hell on Earth, which looks at the Thirty Years' War in 17th century Europe as as sort of a set upon which capitalism begins to emerge. Um, and I guess in your exploration of the of the details of that particularly gruesome episode of, of history, uh, what did you learn about the conditions that led to the emergence of of capitalism? Well, the the real recipe was that you had a uh, feudal order that was being uh, outstripped at its base by a emerging capitalism you know it was already in on the ground reality in many places but the institutions of governance and administration were not suited for it they were suited for the feudal mode of production uh, but because the capitalists were not strong enough social uh, force to really challenge the existing political structures uh they were still sort of zombified uh overlords uh and it took the real deep material crisis of the 17th century to uh bring about so much uh conflict between the si the, the different states of europe that uh, these forces were finally directed and unleashed by various powers in order to win this contest and out of that emerges these new social forms that are now uh, designed around this new mode of production yeah i guess i'm curious you know what can what that could teach us and again i'll, I'll, I'll i'm asking you to speculate here sorry um but uh what that can teach us about the emergence of something after capitalism and obviously hopefully that's socialism of some variety um but it seems like like the ingredients that you're talking about are sort of like, you know, there are, I don't know, a, a series of like techniques. You talk about accounting, you talk about sort of, you know, w ways of sort of organizing capital um, and the sort of social relations that come along with that, which are sort of suppressed or sort of marginal, at least it, until there's this like giant crisis, at which point they become necessary, at which point they become adopted, at which point they become, they, they at yeah. least go, go on the, the, the trajectory of being dominant. Yes. Um, so, so I guess in the current context, you know, we could certainly say, okay, well, there's no lack of crises. I mean, there's, you know, um, I mean, I think one that you sort of talk about is the flattening of human experience, uh, but also obviously there's the ecological degradation, there's catastrophic climate change, there's potential for civilization ending nuclear war. Um, but I guess, you know, in that, in that context, what, what do you see as, as the potential kind of new set, new sorts of relations, um, that might be necessitated by those crises that might be elevated, uh, which are currently marginal. Well, I, I at, at the base level, as again, I don't know, but we can 
we are looking right now at a fundamental shift uh, in like the political economy of the major uh, uh, powers of the world right now, away from the globalized uh, capitalism that marked the post Cold War era. Uh, and now it, we're transitioning back to like a neo mercantile. Uh, uh, competitive framework where it's every man for themselves as everyone tries to wring profits out of a uh, extinguishing uh, capitalism, but with direct state investment in a so-called green transition uh, that is really just a, a return to uh, state capitalist industrial policy and the attendant state competition and uh, military uh, brinksmanship that comes with that. So we're all, we are seeing that the, the crisis is transforming things. And uh, once again, we are seeing it is not the direct result of anybody getting an idea in their head to change things. It is conditions changing, uh, a status quo no longer being viable, and then an improvis improvis improvisational attempt to just keep uh, the, the roof from caving in. And in doing that, and new models are being built now they're kind of old models in this case uh it's like the breaking back into national pools of, of capital from what had been a global one uh but like we are seeing what the crisis is doing at the nation state level already obviously you're you seem pretty down on the the state of the left i mean to the extent that you even sort of you know assert that there's <laughs> there's no real left to, to speak of but um but yeah, I guess I guess if you were to sort of, you know, say like where do you think like the the points of intervention there are in terms of I don't know steering that improvisation or in, you know in 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 a way that that at least plants the seeds for something different. I mean, right now, you know, the 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 boring eternal answer is always going to be uh, the point of production itself, organizing people who are at key choke points of production and. Uh, demanding a rebalancing of uh, power, whether that is uh, going to be effective, whether there's enough time, whether there is enough capacity, is a separate question. But like that's th those are the only places, uh, uh, the only gaps in the armor that really exist and always have. And and what do you see as those 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 choke points? Just to just to get get one more layer of detail in there. I mean, where production occurs, where uh, transportation, that's a huge part of it. You know, uh, the, the, the actual productive uh, and distributive economy. Yeah. And I guess on the same similar note, I wanted to sort of share the, the basic thesis of this show just by way of giving you something to potentially critique. Um, but, but the basic idea, I mean, I, I certainly accept and affirm that, that, you know, um, that wage workers and, and workers more broadly, you know, including reproductive labor are the sort of engine of any kind of positive historical transformation or, you know, transform future transformation that I can imagine. Um, and I have honestly, I have no idea whether a move away from capitalism will happen sort of incrementally, you know, the way capitalism replaced feudalism or in some kind of blaze of world revolution, um, if it happens at all. But, um, but but I guess in all of those scenarios, we'll need some kind of head start on new forms of social relations. We'll need, um, and 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 specifically, that's why I'm interested in cooperatives because, um, you know, even if they don't have the ability to challenge capitalism, what they do have is the ability to create new ways of interacting, even in a partial way, um, new ways of organizing labor, of coordinating people, and so on. And and that seems to me that that technical expertise every time there's been a revolution is is something that is in just profoundly short supply <laughs> once yeah. you actually flip the switch you know um mm -hmm. of, of state power or whatever um and and i think i mean my, my sense is that i'm aligned with 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 what marx has said about about cooperatives in, in this sense as well um obviously in a totally different context than we have now um but but so so I've invested at least part part of my time, and certainly this show is about sort of investing you know at least some of our time as as socialists as leftists or or whatever into creating these kind of institutions and figuring out how they work and making them work better and then and then carving out little areas of of uh, you know spheres of influence where we can make 
make make an economy that works differently. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I guess that's a long way of saying, uh, tell me why I'm wrong, or at least partially mistaken. Huh. No, I mean, I, I think cooperatives if you, are a good idea. If you're part of one, if you're engaged in that, it's it's a, it's a better use of time than other things. Certainly, I mean, yeah, I don't know if it can replace capitalism, but it can give individuals uh, experience in, in in the the give and take of cooperation necessary to just you know carry a light with them which is all we can really ex- hope to do at this point in history uh, i think we really do have to as part of our shedding of ego uh shed any grand strat grand plans for the human experiment um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm curious about that because I mean, you, 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 you talk a lot, obviously, in just even just in historical terms about, you know, different attempts to make revolution and and uh, whether it's world revolution or just at the state level, um, and yeah, and, and and you are actually you you you've said that you're working on sort of a something about the Spanish Revolution. So I'm yeah, I'm curious what, um, what you. I guess how how you how you conceive of 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 things of things changing uh, on a big scale is it is 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 it really the state power the the main game in town or is is uh, it, are there are there other things that can happen on the level of social relations that can then um, you know well I I have a general bigger? idea of how it it uh, of the of the of the movement and it I don't like talking about it too much because a lot of people take it as some sort of doom doomer ideology as some sort of a hopelessness because i do think that like what we all consciously or unconsciously imagine when we think of revolutionary change is a is a evolution within a general subjectivity that we're part of uh that you know, stretches back in history and and we imagine stretching into the future uh and i think that that subjectivity is uh pretty much unchallengeable thanks to the uh, inconceivable asymmetry in technological uh, power and access uh, as you go up the social ladder across like the whole world system. Uh, And so I think that what we think of as civilization will likely uh, over time uh, shrink to atolls of you know complete techno domination where anything human is going to be methodically squeezed out uh, you're going to have people walking around but whatever we think of as human isn't going to be there anymore uh, but at the same time that that's happening there is going to have to be a strategic retreat from huge parts of the world uh, by those same techno capitalist forces uh, in order to reinforce, you know, the 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 key areas and the, the soft points, and and it's there, I think, that new ways of being human are going to be formed, and you know, not that's going to be a lot of uh, a horror, but it's also going to be uh, eventual, uh, the eventual establishment of some sort of intelligent life in something like a homeostatic relationship with uh, its environment. And then from there, who knows what what comes after that? But I think that's where any green shoots are going to emerge. I mean, that sounds uh, uncannily like uh, Raúl Zibachi. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but but the sort of South American, you know, anarchist, I don't know, observer writer, um, you know, who talks about sort of yeah, the, the sort of vast areas of exclusion where sort of new kinds of social relations are are forming based on you know the just the, the, the sort of bare at least for now the bare minimum of of survival you know in in slums and um you know landless peasants and so on but um but but is is that what you're talking about yeah i mean i, I that does sound like yeah what i've said yeah definitely hmm. and and so what does that leave <laughs> for people in the in the industrial core as it were I think you just need to know what what you will do, you know, when the time comes, you know, and the time is coming every moment of every day and it's coming for different people at different times. And can you recognize it when it appears to you, when, when, when you are forced to make a, a deeper moral choice about what to do with yourself, 
but that choice cannot be prescribed from above. It has to emerge from a honest encounter. Right. Which sort of brings us back to, to that, those sort of earlier, I guess, I don't know, moments of introspection or something. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I guess on a similar note, you've talked about sort of the idea that someone living under like a real form of socialism would be just completely unrecognizable, like their whole horizon or their whole like way of understanding the world their what, what means anything to them, Mm -hmm. um, would, would be, you know, just unrecognizable to us as people who live in this sort of, uh, you know, cult of the self slash capitalism slash whatever else. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and you've also sort of talked about, um, yeah, the successor to the left, um, you know, have, finding some way to address that. Um, and, and I, and I guess, um, yeah. Can you comment on the, on the, on the historical conditions that we're facing right now and, and, and the sort of that, that specific, uh, yeah. Challenge. I'm sorry. What I, I kind of didn't. Yeah. I think I lost track of my own thread. Let me try again. Um, so you've, you've talked about the idea that someone living under real socialism would be sort of unrecognizable to us in terms of what, Right. What yeah. Makes, what, what makes the meaning, but um, and and what what means anything to them, but 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 I guess um, I guess I'm curious, like what do you what do you see as sort of what lies between us and that? Like what what are the sort of? I mean, it's again, a, it's it's a back, unspeakable from, like, the chasm. Conditions. Yeah. Like sorry, it's an unspeakable whole. It's it cannot be addressed because it is it's made up of events that have not happened yet and can't be anticipated, and that the 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 people who emerge from that process will be changed by the experience of it. I guess that's all I can really say. I mean, I, I'm full of shit. I'm, I'm a complete fraud. Like I don't have any answers for anyone, you know, like I, 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 I can only like talk around the black hole at the center of uh, life right now, which is the deep supposition and suspicion people have that like all of the, all of the struts have already broken and we are just like in the uh it who impossible to predict how long it lasts sort of free fall and if that's the case then how what are you supposed to do and i don't know that's that's fair uh and i think that's specifically what makes your commentary interesting is that there is that sort of reckoning with with you know there's the sort of pointing at what's totally unknown and then there's sort of the like p- tried trying to peek over the edge uh, of that. Um, I guess to get to get more concrete and more cl- and you know a little closer to your sort of current experience, um, you've talked to, I guess a lot about the the sort of there's sort of a, a a kind of a deep engagement or absorption with with art art or even popular culture that doesn't seem to be available to us, and you sort of link that to the sort of age of on-demand streaming and how there's just a sort of flattening of, uh, ba- because I guess precisely of the abundance that we have, we don't have to wait for anything. We can just, you know, immediately stream whatever we want in terms of, in terms of cultural material or, or any other kind of media consumption. Um, and, and then you also talk about how the meaning of events is sort of immediately metabolized, uh, by, you know, whatever cultural political team is, is out there. And I, and I guess, yeah, I guess I'm wondering, um, to come at it from, I guess, more of a, more of a media angle, like, what do you think lies beyond this state of affairs, uh, I guess, for the individual and the collective? What lies beyond the state of affairs? Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) I have no idea. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. I mean, uh, that's the totally legitimate answer. I'm, I'm, just, I, you know, I, I'm just trying to push, push, push the edge here because you, you know, it just feels like you're. you're I get it, but that's like I, con- I, 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 every time I ever do that, I feel myself falling. Yeah, like I can feel myself just pinwheeling through space, and maybe I should just let myself feel that way. Maybe I'm a coward, but uh, it, it doesn't feel uh, good. Can you say more about that? <laughs> I just I, I I every time I try to 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 draw anything from the future it just makes me more aware of my own uh, incredibly cramped limited perspective. 
I guess another way of asking that would be like, what do you think it is about the sort of abundance that we have that, that, that is sort of, that has that flattening effect? Well, I mean, it, it gives you the idea that there is a, a, a consumer based solution to all problems that like the hole within you can be filled with products you know, or experiences. Uh, and that, 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 that if you can spend a life, painting over the the hole by uh, that you will uh, have won in some way uh, instead of the reality which is that you'll be left you know uh, completely uh, bereft when when you can no longer ignore that confrontation okay um and and I guess just I mean I, I think I'm I'm pretty much out of questions and uh, except for this 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 last one which which uh, I, I think you've addressed at least in part but but I want to give it a crack anyway um, you know when you look at the actually existing left uh, or its siblings or relatives I guess you know what are the sort of concrete pieces um, that that feel solid that feel like they're kind of building blocks for something uh that that goes into that unknown space i mean nothing that i see you know nothing i am engage with like i said i'm all alone out here you know i don't and that's my fault my cowardice that i'm not building anything but uh whoever is building stuff i wish them well i mean but it's interesting i mean if you listen to you i mean bernie era matt obviously has a, a very different take on this and you you know you guys were at one point you know pushing people to get involved in the DSA at one point you were sort of exhorting people to get out in the streets with the, the sort of, you know, and at least engage with the sort of BLM stuff. Um, uh, do you feel like you've pull, pull, pulled back from that or, or have become disillusioned from, from I, all I pulled back from telling anyone what to do <laughs> like stuff, like telling people to do things because I, I have only, I've seen where that, what, what that ends up looking like. And it ends up being a, a people, whatever their conscious intentions, trying to flee from the reality that we find ourselves in, trying to find a, a escape valve from confrontation. And I, and I, I mean, I know that like whatever I do, in the, my career is of very limited value in any real sense. And so, you know, as I got an ego and I want to make myself feel better about what I do. So part of that is at least like feeling that I am uh, holding true to my own conviction that uh, the less people think that that uh, liberation can come through uh, ecstatic experience of like media spectacle, the better. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. I mean, I, I mean, I feel like a lot of people like on the left certainly would like would just, you know give a lot to be in a position where, where you are so they so they could like tell people what to do or like prescribe things or like mobilize people and so on um uh and and i have to i, I mean i have to imagine that you you think that there's a scenario certainly during the bernie the bernie moment uh there seemed to be a scenario where that made sense um but I guess yeah. But like once when you have an experience, though, you have to like metabolize that experience and mm. integrate it into your understanding of the world, and not just keep doing the thing you were doing. Of course. And and so yeah, what 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 has been the sort of experience that you metabolize? Can you just describe that a bit more? Uh, it the, the 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 underlying premise that I had going into the Bernie campaign is that a uh, a socialist message. Uh, would cut through the miasma of of politics and activate the people at like the basis level of their discontent with the system that they find themselves in and would if not lead to socialism would at least create a enduring project around this you know position of president because uh, the president is the ultimate uh actor in the American political theater, like they make, they actually choose to do things, and then people have to respond to those things. Uh, and the hope I had was that just that the persistence of an action-oriented uh, figure at the top would then create meaningful, at least per, cons uh, subjectively meaningful, engagements with 
you know, the 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 uh, broader political uh, uh, contest. But what that would require would uh, uh, require a uh, critical mass of people who are alienated and outside of political, like uh, the regular political subjectivity that uh, exists to neutralize the, uh, a material socialist uh, appeal, uh, and to then you know engage them uh, to uh, break through that uh, gridlock. Uh, and what happened uh, shows that uh, that the people who have stopped paying attention to politics uh, have made a rational decision to do so, uh, and that nothing that reaches them from that vector uh, is going to get past that fundamental rejection of politics as such. Uh, and so that means the horizon for you know changing the conversation or moving things through candidates, through that spectacular apparatus, uh, can only just provide grist for people who are already arrayed somewhere on the political chessboard and not and can't uh, bring any uh, possibility of up, of overturning it or anything. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but that is that is that is what my experience of it told me. And you know, I get to think that I I I am comfortable enough to be able to write off presidential politics that way. Uh, but I also, you know, I feel like I have to be true to that experience uh, rather than try to, you know, uh, wrap myself in contortions to justify continued engagement in something I don't believe in. So, so without telling anyone what to do per se, like what what would be the sort of core thing that you would want to share with somebody who's like, you know, wanting to sort of intervene on that on that on that chessboard or, or even overturn it? Uh, talk to people. Don't post. Talk. Talk to humans. <laughs> In your, you know, people you you have uh, a ideally a regular relationship with uh, in a workplace would be great uh, but just uh, you know uh, neighbors anything just forge uh, con forge connections around achievable goals so that your engagement with politics has to have friction in it because you have something you want to do because that's what makes you refine your political ideas into actionable agendas is having to weigh interpersonal relationships and ideals against concrete objectives, which is something that mediated politics cannot provide. That seems like a, a, a good place to end it. Um, you have a, you have a series upcoming about the uh, Spanish civil war. I guess, do you want to talk about that or, or anything else you'd like to point people toward? Yeah, that should be coming out in September. It's I don't know how many pay, I don't know how many parts it's going to be. Maybe three or four. Uh, we'll see if it's any good. I don't know. <laughs> I'm writing it now, and I think it might be okay. Uh, well, I'm certainly looking forward to it. Um, and thanks so much, Matt Chrisman, for coming on Half Past Capitalism. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs>